Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Wait about another minute, let everybody get into the session, and then we'll begin with our brief update on the district's response to COVID and the current numbers that we have in-house. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, always remember that uh, please keep your, your microphones on mute in order to uh, allow us to briskly move, move through this presentation. And as always, we will end this session with the question and answer if there's any clarifications uh, based on this evening's presentation. So um, this evening, we are going to give a brief overview of our first 16 days of school and how we are responding and what some of our numbers are within uh, all of our schools. We will give you an update on each and every school and uh, the district's response. Mrs. Kitchen, can we, uh, can we move to our second slide, please? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, since August 30th, 2021, we had been adhering to every regulation set forth by the Center for Disease Control and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Uh, by law, we are required to update every single positive case to a portal or um, to a point of contact at the Department of Health. As a result, uh, we are sharing with our community, as we always, uh, to be transparent with everyone and um, where you're sending your kids to school. So here on the screen, I have Hanover Green Elementary School. We've had, since the start of school, two positive cases. Lee Park Elementary School, two positive cases. Memorial Elementary, six, Linwood Elementary, six, and our junior senior high, which is 13, which we have over a thousand students at that school. So I don't want anybody to be alarmed pound for pound with the percentage uh, that's about as accurate as um, of same rate as Memorial Elementary School. Next slide, please. We, uh, these are our standing protocols. If you were uh, on the community update that we had just prior to the start of school, we have masks all day, every day. This is an adherence with the Center for Disease Controls, masking students, limiting exposure to less than 15 minutes each day, does allow us to avoid quarantine or exclusions of your students from school, which is the biggest problem that we're experiencing now is that learning loss. So we wanna avoid any time out of school due to the virus. So we have asked families and it's been amazing the response and the cooperation that we've had from this community to um, have their students masked each and every day with the exception of in the cafeteria. So um, as you see the bullet points down below, masking every day except during the lunch periods, the Hanover Area School District did add another layer of safety for your children, and that is a desk shield beyond the mask itself. That's a desk shield that's with those students within the classroom and then also taken to the cafeteria so that the students, while they have their masks down while, eat, while eating, we do have a, a, a layer of security or a layer of safety between them and the other students having their lunch. We do <clears throat> work closely with our custodial department and their regularly scheduled cleaning of any high touch points, railings, doorknobs, et cetera, so that your students um, are, are always in a sanitary environment. And then we also, uh, on the next slide, I'm gonna share with you about uh, what we do as a protocol for our bus runs. And then the final thing is in the evening, uh, sanitizing our classrooms uh, during the evening to assure that your students are returning the following day to a cleanly classroom. The proactivity from our district, what sets us apart from uh, other districts that um, is should I'm trying to keep you informed about so you feel a bit safer sending your students throughout this crisis we're dealing with. Very first thing is that we spray each and every bus uh, in between runs. So we use the same buses for each school. 
So if there were a case on our first run of the day, we were, we were concerned about contamination for every school that followed that initial run. So what we do is we sprayed the buses down with uh, environmental and, and, and uh, safe chemicals that sanitize or kill anything on contact. And um, this is done between every single run. So there's not a cross contamination between each school. Um, we, uh, we are scheduling um, regular tests beginning in October of un unvaccinated staff members. This is an outreach program to assure that we are taking a strategic approach to find cases before they find us. Consideration of uh, meeting with our athletic competitors to discuss the possibility of having some testing prior to competition. So we're not getting into a competitive issue where we're bringing uh, a virus into another computer or, or our community or vice versa. As I mentioned in the previous slide, we have desk shields. It's another added protective layer between the students and their uh, an added layer beyond the mask. And then um, we have been encouraging families to um, keep your child home when, when sick and um, to get tested prior to the return. And that is a preventative measure. And then the final thing on here is seating charts on the bus, the classroom and the cafeteria. The purpose of these seating charts, if your child has mentioned this at home, is purely for the fact of contact tracing. We know where every student is at every moment. So on that first slide, you may have seen that there was 13 positive cases in the high school. And you wonder why you haven't been contacted because your student goes there, you may feel uncomfortable. I didn't know there was 13 cases. I should have known about this. I don't want anybody in this community to feel that way because we have very precise seating charts that we know who would be close or dubbed a close contact. So we reach out in very efficient and very practical protocols that only reach out to the families that were exposed. So we're not alarming families and we're doing it with efficiency, the contact tracing. So that's the proactivity. The next thing is um, the recommendations or the ask that I have for the parents on this community update here is to um, always keep your, your child home when they're, they're sick or if they're exhibiting any signs and symptoms of the virus. Um, I would encourage you to keep your student home and obviously get them uh, tested prior to a uh, uh, the return. The next thing is please always send your child to school with the mask. Um, we've had a few instances where students were showing up at the bus stop or at the front door. We do provide masks. However, um, we do ask that that becomes a regular part of your routine uh, to assure that we are adhering to the, the district's protocol so that we never have an instance where a student is exposed to anything undesirable. The next thing is communication. Uh, I have been sending out remind texts that are asking for vaccination declarations, which is um, a proof of vaccination. The families that have had their child vaccinated were very, very appreciative of that. That's gonna cut down on a quarantine, if any quarantine at all. And um, this is, that's the decision maker as to whether we have that declaration or not. So if anybody's on here this evening that did not send in the declaration, please do so, so that we can have your child not miss any school. We will encourage to get the test, um, even though you're vaccinated, to assure that you um, are not positive for the vi virus or any variants. However, um, we, we, we want that, we would like to see that proof before we limit the, um, the quarantine. The next thing is um, the, uh, what we do is we have a, 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 a positive case or a, cl a close contact case submission form that's on our website. So I sent this out through a remind text last week where if your student is positive or you have been informed that you are a close contact or a household contact by one of our staff members, then what we're gonna ask you to do is go on to our website, click that co uh, COVID case submission form, uh, this is available and then it goes through and it prompts you through uh, nearly 10, I think it's 10 questions. And then um, we get all the information out to the necessary staff members and then they will reach out to you with further instructions from a medical perspective and give you better guidance as to how to handle your child. And then we will in our, our turn, click on that Google Classroom so that your student is not missing any time or assignments or tests 
because we know that they're out out of quarantine. So we do our part as a district to make sure that they're um, taking care of themselves, but concurrently receiving an education. So um, that is that form gives us that that direction to go. So if we can work closely together, as I said, seeking help from parents. And then um, I, I want to thank each and every person on here for um, strongly encouraging and, and putting the emphasis on wearing those masks because these kids have been tremendous in being safe. We see students in the cafeteria, which they have 20 to 30 minutes with them within the cafeteria that immediately with within 10 to 15 minutes as they're finished eating, that mask is back up. So um, they are taking this very seriously and evidently that's coming from the household. So I thank you as well as our staff who wants to remain healthy and our administration. So thank you. The self-reporting link, this is on our website, www.hanoverarea.org. That's the self-reporting link that I just spoke of. The next link, is the vaccination declaration that I spoke of. All of these are in the remind text if you have uh, subscribed to that. And um, <clears throat> this would be the easiest way to get those declarations to the district. And just to refresh everybody's memory, if this is the first time that you're getting on to um, hear about our COVID updates, this is the levels of educational delivery a level one, which we're currently in right now, which is uh, our green status. We, um, this is full return, which we're in right now. And we have zero, uh, um, we, we don't have any, any indication or intention at all to change this educational delivery. So this, e this evening's community update is not at all to tell you that we're changing direction. It's simply to give you an update and encourage you to continue to do what you're doing but um, we are in level one. Level two, if we ever did come into an instance where we have beyond 25 cases within a two week period, we may move to a level two, which is a yellow. That's the hybrid model that we were all used to last year. Half students in the building, half students online. And then level three is somewhere where we never wanna to get to, which is red. It's um, where we have a, an abundance of cases within a several week period of time. Uh, where we're fully remote. So uh, we would come back to a meeting like this if we were ever in a situation like that. But I just want to refresh this common lingo that we've been using since the beginning of school and refresh everybody's memory. And then um, the final slide here is just uh, if anybody did want to um, partake in any of the vaccines for their children in order to prevent quarantine, then, um, you know, we as a district are certified. Uh, vaccine vaccine provider. Also, um, after the, the end of the school day, there are um, CVS and Wegmans are, are our closest um, providers. And then as you may have seen on the news, um, the BioNTech and Pfizer are um, preparing to give provide doses to students that are uh, between five and 11 years old that will be available by the end of October, which will be available to us uh, mid-November. So um, I just wanted to just brief our community uh, of where we're at as a district and continue to um, inform and encourage. And uh, at this point, if you could press the, um, the, the, the raise your hand icon or um, the chat section if you would like to seek further clarification and or um, ask a question. But before I do that, before we move to this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I had sent out a remind text about the, the flash flood warnings that are in place for tomorrow. If you can make sure that uh, we are in close contact tomorrow or you're available, if in the case that we had to um, get kids to safety in a hurry due to flash flooding within our region, um, I would be in close contact through remind our all call system and our social media. So um, I'm not saying that we have an early dismissal tomorrow, but if we are getting to a dangerous situation, I most certainly have our student safety at, um, at the utmost premium. So um, I wanna make sure that you're available. So with that being said, let's move to some questions and um, I get you on your way this evening. Okay, Mr. Barrett, we have one question from an iPhone guest. Hi, that's me. 
I, I'm just questioning. I, I listened, but I'm just confused. If there is a positive case in your child's classroom, what does that mean for the other children in the classroom? So what we do is if there's a case within the child's classroom, then we do the contact tracing. Who was ever in the vicinity of that child for unprotected time frames of 15 minutes or more, then become deemed close contacts. So that would then go into the classroom as they shift or uh, into the cafeteria as they shift from the classroom into a vulnerable state of the mask down while they eat. So this is a, a investigate, I don't wanna use the word investigation, but this is an analyzation of their day's events if there's a positive case with the necklace. Okay, cause my concern is my daughter had a positive case in her classroom over, I think eight days ago. And the only one who informed me of this case would be my daughter. That's concerning. What school? The high school. Okay, so if there's a possibility that here's what I'm gonna do. Would like a little further information on this. Okay. There's my information in the chat. So if you could give me a little further information, um, then we could we could get you some answers if in fact um you know uh, we we had this case within that classroom. Okay. Yeah. Perf I can. I'll get all the information from my daughter. I thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Melissa Williams. Hi, Mr. Barrett. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Thanks. Um, I, I think I, I, I'm kind of going to reiterate what the last mom said, but I just want to make sure I understand this. So if there is a positive case in a classroom, mm -hmm. um, unless your child is within, what is it? Three feet or six feet of that student, then you will not be notified. Correct. They will not be notified. Is that what you said? Correct. Cause you're not notifying the whole classes. That's why you're taking um, like charts of where everyone is sitting. Correct. They have that to be within correct. so many feet of that student, correct? Well, it's actually not even the distance. It's, it's unprotected time. So it's 15 minutes or more of unexposed time or unprotected time. So, okay. um, so you could have, so if you have a student in a classroom that tests positive and let's say it's at the high school level and they only have class with my kid once, but they've all had masks on during that class period, then they wouldn't have to, like they would never be contacted then, correct? That is correct. Okay, that makes sense. I understand that then. Um, the only question that I have aside from that though, is if we see an increase, especially with the colder weather coming, if we see an increase in kids who have to quarantine, especially in households that have siblings, mm -hmm. um, you know, like one kid could potentially get COVID and the rest of them not, but then they still have to quarantine. So are you guys going to open virtual backup so those kids aren't behind? Like, I know you had mentioned something about that um, with Google Classroom, but there's a difference between assignments being posted and actually getting a class and being taught the class. I, I, agree, I agree with you, Melissa. So if I, just let me make sure that I'm clarifying that I'm, I'm yeah, getting sure. the question. So your question is, is that as quarantine or possible exposures begin to increase when, if let's say the windows are closed in the school or, you know, whatever it might be, as those cases begin to increase and we have more kids out quarantined, you're asking, are we going to switch to hybrid ever? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know. How, I don't know a better way to ask it. I guess what I'm saying is we have the technology from no. last year. The kids have the equipment to be able to go into a live stream class. Let's just say hypothetically that my kids all had to quarantine. Mm -hmm. Well, at the high school level, if they're not, if they're not sick and they're quarantining, they're missing valuable time in the classroom. 
I was asking like if a child has to quarantine just because of a sibling or potential yeah. case, are you guys going to start opening up virtual? Cause I think it's kind of silly for them to miss all that instruction time. If we have the capability to be providing it to them, does which, that make sense? It does, which we do now, Melissa. I don't know. Oh, if, okay. Which we do. So the second that a student is quarantined, okay. immediately when they leave the building, our teachers turn on the Google Classroom for them particularly. So I they, did not know that. Okay. Yes. So they are running in tandem. The second they leave, running in tandem with the pacing guide of the teacher. So that when they return, whether it's 10, 20 days later, whatever it might be, they return back at the same spot that all the rest of the kids that did not have to quarantine are. Okay. And just to clarify that, when we say turning Google Classroom on, we mean cameras, correct? Negative. Negative. Oh, okay. So, well, that is what I'm talking about because there is a difference. Like th then you're talking about self-teaching again. Like, so for example, like a kid is in a, a math or a chemistry class, mm -hmm. that's a lot for them to be out for 10 days quarantining when they have the ability to actually be observing the class time. I don't understand why we wouldn't use that technology. I, I understand. And, and, and if we get to that level, um, we, we may pivot but right now, what we're doing is we're running assignments and the teachers are working closely with the students. It's a shame. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the recommendation. Mr. Barrett, we have a question from Mr. Shepard. If a okay. building has recess, are the students allowed to take off their masks at recess if the recess is occurring outside the building? Negative. Negative. I, I know that this was a question that has been uh, popping up a few times. And the purpose of us limiting to the cafeteria is because of the seating charts and the organization that we have. When the students are outside, there is no tactical organization that will allow me to send a student home with complete assurance that they have not been exposed for 15 minutes or more or more of unprotected playtime. So I am not comfortable, I understand, but the virus itself is more of a threat to me than a student playing with the mascot. And I'm responsible for child safety and I understand it might not be completely agreed upon, but that's, that is my take. The virus is a lot more harmful than students running around with a mask on. Are there any other questions? No other questions, Mr. Barrett. I thank you. Folks, I thank you very much for coming on here. I'm going to host these once a month to keep families updated as to where we are at with positive cases. And also, um, if anything is ever changing from a, uh, an educational delivery, just like Mrs. Williams was stating, if we change and we're pivoting, we're trying to, um, to increase our level of online communication uh, based on an increase in cases and increase in quarantines, then we will most certainly uh, update you every single month as we meet. So, um, I thank everybody for their time and uh, I'll keep you updated. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you.